Gone Channel. My name is Maria Rebollo. I lead the Global Oncothercesis Program for Elimination here at WHO. And today we want to see Oncothercesis gone from Sierra Leone. And we had a very fascinating webinar aligned where we will hear the exciting story of the progress made by a country despite all the challenges with Ebola, with a past a, a civil unrest and post-conflict. And for that, we have an exciting panel with uh, presentations from the Ministry of Health, the National Onco Elimination Committees, some partners that have been working with the country for many years, and also the neighboring countries to talk about cross-border issues. Uh, I am going to ask my colleague Nadia to project the agenda one second so that you all can see. And while she does that, please, I want to remind you that we have access to interpretation into French and into Portuguese, so you can choose your preferred language here in the interpretation button down in the in your in your panel. Also, please be aware that some of the presentations are going to be pre-recorded and the volume may be a bit lower. So please play with the volume in your computer to make sure that you can hear it very well. So as you see, we have a very packed agenda. We will start with a presentation from the from the country made by Professor Moses Bokari, that is the chair of the National Onco Elimination Committees. We then have a small panel with the different partners from the country, the Ministry of Health, and some of the key players that have been supporting Sierra Leone, before we pass to the next panel with partners and neighboring countries. So without further delay, I'm going to give the floor to Professor Moses Bokari to walk us through the progress that Sierra Leone has made uh, over the past uh, many years to fight on Cotherciasis in the country until we see it completely gone. Thank you so much for being with us, Moses. Well, thank you very much, uh, Maria. And I would like to thank you and your team for the excellent support you have provided to us uh, in preparing for this meeting. And uh, can I have the slides in presentation mode, please? Excellent. Now, so today we will be telling the story uh, about uh, the progress we've been making towards the 2030 roadmap target for oncosarchiasis in Sierra Leone. And I'm talking to you from Freetown, Sierra Leone. Uh, but as you can see, I've got a terrible background, so I'll put my video off now and continue. That will probably make the presentation better. And I'm doing this presentation really uh, on behalf of uh, the uh, ministry of, of health and sanitation. I think, is this not this last slide? Can we go to the first slide, please? I think, ah, that's what I thought. Let's go to first slide. Right, the last one looked like the first one, so uh, I can understand. So this is, uh, as, as Maria said, I chair the uh, National Onco Elimination Committee, and the presentation is on behalf of the Ministry of Health and Sanitation. And with collaboration with our strategic partners, especially those that are involved in technical activities and, um, and then by their contributions from a lot of uh, stakeholders in the country. Next slide, please. Now, uh, our storylines will tell you our very illustrious history uh, in terms of our fight against oncosarchiasis. And then I'll go through evolution of uh, the uh, control and elimination process, talk a little bit about the distribution of the disease, uh, current engagement with strategic partners, and what we are doing towards elimination, the challenges, uh, cross-border issues, and next steps. Next slide, please. I don't know how many of you know already, uh, but the whole story of oncosarchiasis transmission was established in Sierra Leone. It was here in uh, work started around 1923, but published in 1926 by Professor Blacklock that established for the first time that the uh, Onkosaka parasite or volvulus can be transmitted by uh, Simulium damnosum. The lab still exists in Sierra Leone. It's one of the buildings in the uh, Institute of Public Administration and Management here in Freetown. Next slide, please. Now, after the illustrious studies in the early 1920s, things went a bit quiet uh, until mining started in the northern part of the country. That was in the, uh, it was actually started in 1930, 
uh, in a town called Lonsar. Uh, and then in around 1957, they decided to expand into a district called Tonkolili by a, a, a river, Tonkolili River, that supports black flies. Now that's when, you know, mining in those days uh, was really championed by expatriates. So the biting nuisance was a problem and they decided to uh, control the black flies using DDT. So the first attempt in Sierra Leone at the control of Onco through the vector control was the use of DDT in the control of Tonkolili River in 1957. Next slide, please. So uh, after that, uh, a lot of uh, researchers and scientists came to Sierra Leone doing different things with, in the 1960s and 1980s. But before we go into that, I just want to go, go through, I don't expect you to, to read this slide right now, but the key dates that uh, I've already alluded to 1957, but in, 20, in, in 1974, some of you are aware, the Onkosakiasis Control Program was uh, launched in West Africa, but Sierra Leone was not part of it. It, was, it involved Benin, uh, Burkina Faso, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, uh, Mali, and Togo. But in 1988, uh, to 1989, Sierra Leone became part of the activities of Onkosakiasis Control Program. At that time, it was mainly area spraying for uh, uh, the control of black flies. Now, so it was soon after that uh, that the National Onkosakiasis Program was launched in Sierra Leone. But again, but that was in 1989. Two years later, in 1991, we had the war. So we had lost time and the war continued for uh, 10 years until 2022. So between 1988 and 2022, very little happened in, uh, in uh, Sierra Leone. So um, uh, then uh, the, uh, when the war finished in 2022, uh, the, the, uncle said the, the program resumed in 2024. Now, this is very important here, this uh, 1988 and, 2020, and, and 2004, because uh, this will be, you will be understanding when we present our baseline data, it will be coming from these years. Next slide, please. Now, in the early 1980s, a lot of scientists uh, came to Sierra Leone to look at the vector, di the transmission dynamics and vector ecology. Uh, of course, we all know about black flies flow, uh, breeding in fast flowing waters. Uh, Professor Rory Post uh, was actually one of those scientists who came surveying rivers and trying to identify breeding sites and the vectors of uh, Onkosakiasis in Sierra Leone. Now, Sierra Leone is a very, very hot, uh, wet country with a lot of rainfall, averaging between 2,000 millimeters uh, and uh, four in, in the southeast and 4,000 in the north. But luckily for us, we have lots of rivers, about 12 major rivers that drain this. And what is important for you to know that these rivers are all across the country, but each of the 12 major rivers actually harbor breeding sites for Simulium damnosum. And because of that, uh, Onkosakiasis is a problem all across the country uh, in terms of districts in almost all districts, uh, because although we can say that Bonth and the Western area were not affected, but there are certain uh, villages in Bonth that are not on Bonth Island. So uh, surveys by uh, Rory and other uh, scientists, mainly from the UK, were, were able to establish the breeding sites and uh, the vectors. Next slide, please. So based on these studies, uh, we were able to show that they, mainly the savannah flies, Simulium damnosum sensotrictu, and Simulium sabanum, were breeding mainly in the northern part of the country, which is drier with savannah vegetation, and the other vectors, Sanctopoli, Sobrensi, Sobrensi B, Yehensi and Squamosum were breeding mainly, well, you, they could be found all over the country, but mainly focused in the Southeast. And you can see that I highlighted Leonensis. So it was not only that uh, uh, the relationship between Ovalvulus and Damnosum was established in Sierra Leone, scientists working in Sierra Leone were also able to identify a new vector of Onkosaka Volvulus, uh, Simulium Leonensis here. Next slide, please. So based on, on the transmission dynamics and looking at the 
breeding sites, uh, we could identify as a profile that basically in this country, we have a forest epidemiology uh, with the forest cytospecies species that I've already alluded to, mainly in the forested areas, uh, but they can be found all over the place. And then the savannah flies mainly in the north. Now, the prevalence of Onkosaka nodules is high in the country. Prevalence rate for ocular lesions and blindness are low in comparison to what occurs in other savanna areas, uh, but it's not in terms of gross cutaneous manifestations, that is not very common uh, as far as the profile for morbidity is concerned in Sierra Leone. Next slide, please. Now, so because uh, I wanted to come here earlier on to talk a little bit about cross-border issues, because I've already spoken about the rivers all over the country and breeding up the vectors. Now, the uh, Sierra Leone borders Liberia and Guinea, and these countries, as the borders are, are rivers. So um, to do something about uh, river blindness in Sierra Leone, you've got to have a cross-border thing established in a very good way. And I'm sure later on in, in this webinar, uh, we'll have presentations from Guinea and Liberia highlighting these. But um, with support from development partners, earlier on, uh, more than uh, 15 years ago, they established, they made sure that at that time, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Guinea formed what's called the Mano River Union. Cote d'Ivoire is now part of the Mano River Union. And they made sure that the National Oncosarchiasis uh, Control Coordinators uh, met uh, annually uh, to, to discuss things like joint surveillance, synchronization of treatment. But as I said, uh, probably more will be said from our colleagues from Ghana, I mean, from Guinea and Liberia later. Next slide, please. So now, again, uh, as we continue to do the presentation, we will probably uh, we'll present in some data on uh, the uh, transmission and prevalence of onchocerciasis in Sierra Leone. So it would be important for us to just highlight a little bit um, what the transmission intensity is there. One of the few countries where we've actually done uh, uh, transmission studies to determine uh, the exposure to infective larvae. So I was involved in this study many years ago. Uh, it was published in 1990. Uh, but through these uh, transmission studies, we were able to show that uh, in, in, even in the forested areas of Sierra Leone, yeah, people can be exposed to nearly 6,000 infective larvae per person per year. Now, this is a very high uh, uh, transmission intensity in terms of annual transmission potential. I mean, it's higher than what has been reported in other countries like Nigeria and in, in other countries like uh, uh, DRC, and uh, Cameroon where intensity of transmission is high. Next slide, please. Now, so uh, I, I just want to talk about uh, what our situation is in terms of prevalence of onchocerciasis across the country. As I said before, when I started the presentation, uh, you have to take note of the year 1988 uh, because that was when um, the onchocerciasis control program was extended into Sierra Leone and during that year, in order for them to assess the uh, impact of the area spraying, there were some, so, I mean, they identified sentinel sites and they conducted some uh, baseline surveys to determine prevalence of uh, onchocerciasis. And then, as I said, two years down the line, there was a war, things went quiet. It resumed again in 2024, in 2004. So again, after 10 years, we then started uh, another baseline. So the baseline we'll be presenting today uh, to uh, demonstrate our impact will be uh, from 39 sentinel sites from two surveys in uh, 1988 and 2004. Next slide, please. So from these surveys, conducted in 39 sentinel sites of villages involving over 7,000 uh, patients. Uh, an overall prevalence of 53% uh, was demonstrated uh, with the average uh, MF prevalence per village ranging from 39% uh, to nearly 62%. And in terms of uh, prevalence in the Northern province with the savanna epidemiology, uh, it tended to be higher than the prevalence in the Southern province with the sort of the forest 
uh, epidemiology and profile. And uh, we're in between uh, in the Eastern province, that was where we're getting uh, very low. Uh, but in terms of, uh, but generally um, men uh, were more uh, exposed and infection rates in more men was higher than in, men, in women. Next slide, please. Now, so again, uh, before I come on to the impact uh, that uh, we did after uh, first be talking about five years of MDA, I just wanted you to see uh, from 2005 to 2022, what the, cover what the epidemiology coverage was for ivermectin treatment. Now, apart from 2005, when we had about 55% coverage in all of the years, the, the epidemiology coverage was more than uh, 73%. Now you see a big hole in the middle there, that is 2014, that is the only time between 2005 and 2022 when there was no MDA. That was when the Ebola stroke, the Ebola outbreak started in 2014, and it was so severe that uh, we could not conduct MDA. Uh, and so let's just have that to the back of our mind as we continue to, ex to explain. Next slide, please. Now, so these slides show uh, the uh, prevalence rates uh, for the baseline, and then after five rounds of MDA uh, that was uh, done in 2010. Now, again, uh, I don't expect you to read all the small prints there, but where you see uh, red or brown, that's very high prevalence, and coming down to green and yellow, a severe reduction. And between 20, uh, 2004 and 2010, uh, we had about 60% reduction in the prevalence of onchocerciasis in the country and in some villages up to 80%. I will show the figures in the next slide, please. Now, so uh, looking at uh, uh, the post-treatment uh, prevalence rates, uh, where, which involve uh, 5,621 people. And uh, so the, the point prevalence rate, uh, there was really a trend, uh, there was a decline, uh, a trend in the, in, as it, uh, of decline in the prevalence across the country. And uh, compared with baseline overall, and the prevalence decreased by 60%. But as I said, uh, prevalence uh, rates among districts, so this uh, range from after treatment, from about 7% to 30%. Uh, Remember that at baseline, we were talking of prevalence rates from about 32% uh, to over 60%. So uh, this was a huge reduction. And um, generally, as I said, the reduction was greater than 50%, but reduction in prevalence in some districts, especially Kwenadugu and Pujang, it was more than 80%. Next slide, please. So uh, based on that, um, so some of us here uh, in Sierra Leone that have contributed to that, we were very optimistic. And we, we presented in our 2017 publication that these results suggested that the oncocytiasis elimination program in Sierra Leone was on course to reach the objective of eliminating oncocytiasis in the country by uh, 2025. Now that is just around the corner. And today, some of my colleagues here uh, or will be explaining if we are see that optimistic and where we see the trend going. Next slide, please. Now, uh, so there were a, a, a lot of major challenges uh, encountered in this process uh, uh, before, between uh, when it's 1988 and 2004 and up to now. I've, I've already told you about the civil conflict, I've alluded to the Ebola outbreak that did not allow MDA in 2014. And of course, we are all aware of what happened in, in 2019 for COVID. Now, but the good news about here, where the, the, uh, the oncocytosis control program here was, was really good in, in terms of uh, teaching other people what to do, uh, is that the, uh, there was uh, malaria, mass treatment for malaria, and that was really informed by the CDTI program that was already established for oncocytosis control. Next slide, please. Now, uh, after the 2010 survey, in 2017, uh, we did an assessment now looking at the uh, serology um, using the rapid diagnostic test, that was the BioLine test. And uh, so because we're looking at children here 
uh, this was mainly uh, done uh, during the task survey, uh, looking at, at, at children. I mean, based on the data that we collected, uh, we found out that this really involved children from the age of uh, four to 14. And uh, based on that, uh, looking at 17, more than 17,000 samples, we, uh, on average, uh, within those children, the um, uh, OV16 uh, uh, rate, uh, positivity rate, was uh, on average 2.1%. And that was, uh, that was ranging from 1.9% to 2.3%. So that gave us a lot of hope uh, because uh, based on uh, what the cutoff that we were dealing with at the moment, we were targeting us for going below 2%. So I mean, I mean 2.1 was very good for us. And so that kept us happy. And then we, we had uh, to do uh, uh, OV16 again using Eliza. Next slide, please. Yeah, so again, uh, using the methodology uh, and the data app from uh, the uh, from SPEN and looking at 8,526 sample. I mean, some of my colleagues will talk a little bit about this later. Uh, let me just go to the results. Next slide, please. Now, so uh, again, as I said, this is just going through the sample methods. Uh, somebody from the team will we'll talk more about this a little bit later. Let's go to the results now. Next slide. Now, so I just want you to look at, so we did huge surveys uh, looking at uh, uh, processing the sample, the dry blood sample with, with ELISA. And wow, we came up with uh, over 20% on average. And the rates from district range uh, from, uh, as you can see, uh, I think 6.6% uh, to nearly 30%. Now, on the one hand, with the rapid diagnostic test, we got a very low uh, OV16 rate in children, uh, not the same age group, I have to remind you. And then again, when we did this, uh, we did that. So we have, a, we have some work to do and, and we need some um, comments from you about what's happening here, but again, some of my colleagues will allude to that. So, but that's the situation that we are in. Uh, next slide, please. So, I mean, based on what we, we, where we are and what we have seen, we are clearly, I mean, when you look at the 2017 survey, we will have said that we will get to over 50% uh, of the country uh, stopping MDA before 2030. But for now, I think what we can really tell you I mean, based on what we are seeing and what is happening is that Sierra Leone can stop MDA in at least one, but I'm sure many more uh, uh, implementation units by 2030. And, uh, but if uh, what we are seeing from the ELISA results, that's the case, then we might be having uh, soliciting discussions around uh, making a case for twice yearly MDA elimination and also for implementation research uh, just to see what's happening in the last mile. But the uh, National Program Coordinator will talk a little bit about this uh, when it comes to his presentation. Next slide, please. Now, that's, that's what we have for our story, and I would like to thank you all for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Moses. That was really, really amazing. And I actually want to pick up in some of the things you said and, and have a follow-up question. So you mentioned that there were these surveys say, after five rounds of NDA, and at the time you were very optimistic that elimination could be reached by 2030. And you mentioned that maybe now you, you and the entire team in Sierra Leone is thinking differently maybe. So I want to give the floor to Jaobi from Helen Keller International, that is a critical partner in Sierra Leone, to share with us your thoughts. Do you think Sierra Leone is still on track to reach elimination by 2030? Well, thank, thank you, Maria. I think this is a great question. I, I think it deserves an hour long answer. Well, we know Sierra Leone really has come a long way in controlling uh, schistosomiasis, uh, not schistosomiasis, onxocytosis, sorry. <laughs> Well, from very high baseline prevalence before the OCP time, uh, at that time, I think 80% of the country was meso or hyper endemic, and particularly around the Bafi uh, River Basin. So the skin sniff result in 2010, and of course the OV-16 RDT result in 2017 showed 
you know, Sierra Leone was right on track to achieve the program objectives. But we do recognize that there are some villages you know, still with relatively high prevalence. But the 2019 SD ELISA result certainly raised some question, you know, what the real situation in the country is in terms of uncle infection. But we know SD ELISA is super sensitive. But even with this as ELISA, as ELISA result, it still showed a, a massive decrease from the baseline, the MF microfilarial prevalence. So huge progress. But in the last few years under the, uh, the USID's Act of West project, we have increased our support on improving the quality of MDA implementation in country. This was uh, to address the, uh, the repeated failure of LF tasks, a uh, pretas in the Northern district. Now, all the district except one Bombali district have successfully passed pretas and task one and stopped LFMDA. So this shows that the quality you know, it's massively improved. We will continue and, and we are also expanding the quality improvement measures efforts to other OV district in coming years and paying special attention to the potential hotspot areas and hard to reach populations. And next week actually is in Accra, I'm in Accra now, and we will conduct a program review meeting for countries under Act West portfolio for UNCLE. And we'll discuss the program needs and perhaps some alternative strategies to see what can be adopted in Sierra Leone. I'm sure with all this additional effort, I, I do believe, and I'm confident, Sierra Leone is still on track to achieve OV elimination by 2030, or soon after, if not 2030. That, that's, you know, that's, what I think. That's excellent, and I, I really like that positive optimism. And I want to follow up, actually, on what you said about the serological results, because we know that the, we have a challenge in oncotherciasis, we have a challenge of diagnostics. The diagnostics we are using do not necessarily meet the target pro profile of WHO. So I want to ask uh, our colleague, Luis Hamill from SciSavers, one other critical partner of Sierra Leone. What are your thoughts on the results from the serology in, uh, in the service that were conducted in Sierra Leone, particularly where we see very low prevalence, like 2% in children? Is there anything we should do uh, to follow up and validate and verify the results uh, from the different surveys that have been conducted, knowing the limitations we have? from the OV16 serology? Thanks, Maria. Um, yeah, I would just echo Yaobi's comments that Sierra Leone have come such a long way since the start of their program. And we can really see that with, you know, as Moses so ably outlined, you know, those incredibly high biting rates and the transmission potentials that were found in Sierra Leone before control started. So uh, although, you know, it maybe seems like by the current tools that we have, uh, Sierra Leone may be a little bit far away from the current OV16 thresholds, one, we have to remember, you know, where they started, that current prevalence represents a massive reduction and a massive achievement, and that many, many people in Sierra Leone can enjoy better health and, you know, freedom from uncle symptoms because of the efforts that the programme and the partners have been making. Um, and also, yes, I think to recognise that there are some limitations with the current OB16 diagnostics. Um, none of what are currently available, to my understanding, you know, exactly match the, the, the target product profile that has been released. And, and, and that's an issue, I think, that all countries need to, to grapple with. Um, but I actually, I might, I might quote you here, Maria. I, I think that in the past you've said, if you see something, say something, you know, if you see something, do something. Um, and I think what we saw with some of this OV16 data is that it's not an even distribution of prevalence. So there's hotspots in the country. Um, some parts of the country are doing really, really well, have quite low prevalence, like much below the national average where some areas, some districts have a higher uh, prevalence above what the national average would be. And that's again, what we expect with uncle being a focal disease. Um, and there also did seem to be some overlap, some correlation with the areas that had the, no, the highest known biting rates and also areas that had had issues with, you know, sort of 
in the past having failed failed a pre-TAF or something like that. So, um, you know, the, if new diagnostics come onto the market in future, which obviously we all hope they do and, and cross our fingers, that would be soon. I think it would be great to, to have another look and see, you know, exactly what the situation is in Sierra Leone when we have those techniques with more confidence. Um, but for now, it seems as if, you know, whether the, the level is really as high as 20 or it's a bit lower, it's a bit higher, it's hard to say, but I think we have seen something. We have seen a pattern of some evidence of ongoing transmission. And in my opinion, I think that's what we need to, to focus on. The take home message there is that, you know, we've made huge projects, progress, but there is that little bit more to go. And I think that we need to follow up perhaps with more detailed surveys, um, bringing in new diagnostics as soon as we can, and also relying on another strength of Sierra Leone and their programme, and that is their entomological data. Thank you. I'll leave it there. Thank you so much, Luis. And as you said, maybe new diagnostics uh, become available in the near future, but also maybe new treatments. And I have made sure that Sierra Leone is actually invited to a meeting that we are going to have uh, uh, in June to discuss moxidectin as a potential new alternative treatment in some areas that you just call hot spots or maybe areas with very high transmission. And for that, I want to give the voice to the Professor Daniel Boakie. He has been really working very closely with Sierra Sierra Leone and with many other countries in Africa to make sure that we have a better understanding of entomological uh, and data and transmission uh, happening. Uh, Daniel, do you think that Sierra Leone has an exceptionally, exceptionally high transmission happening? What are your thoughts? And also what could be the role of entomology to try to, to really confirm whether there is a still ongoing transmission in some of these areas? Are you with us, Daniel? Yeah, thank you, Maria. I'm off camera because I'm also uh, traveling and I'm sitting in a hotel room. No and so I want to make sure that I don't listen. Yes, uh, if you look at uh, the presentation uh, by Moses, you do find that Moses did mention that high annual transmission potential that you did find in some of, of the places. And if we take uh, Sierra Leone, you have the refugees that uh, were mentioned by Moses that uh, Sabanum, which is more of a savanna species, was found before 1985, mostly in the northern part. But after 1985, you started seeing Sabanum moving uh, a bit southwards. And then some uh, Damnosum census structure you only found in the dry season. You have a rare species, which is Degerense, which is not known whether that is a, a good vector or not. And then you have a squamosome, which is found in the dry season in the southern extension. And then you have Yahensi, which is permanent in most uh, of, of those rivers. And then you have the Sanctipali subcomplex, where you have Leonensi, which is uh, unique to uh, uh, Sierra Leone. Now, the, if you look at all these uh, uh, particular uh, uh, species, a study that was done by uh, Professor Cheek and the late uh, Rob Gams, and which was published, uh, showed that uh, collected from many sites from Sierra Leone all the way to some sites in uh, East Africa. And then when they did the dissection, looking at the uh, parity and also the infections that this uh, uh, flies carried, the observations were that S. Yahensi, which is Samilium Yahensi, and members of the Samtipali uh, subcomplex tend to have higher mean parasite loads than the savanna species Sabanum and Amnosum. And if you look at Sierra Leone, you come to find out that the majority of the species you find in are the forest species, which are the species that carry the highest load of, 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 of uh, parasites even when they are found together with the savanna species. And so this tells you that you're having a role that is being played by this uh, species. The other thing that they also found was that even if you take not just the parasite load, but the infective uh, 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 rates, you had higher uh, levels in, in the uh, forest species, Yahensi, Santipauli, Squamosum, and others, compared to the savanna species. And the highest transmission indices were found in the forest species compared to the savanna species. So all this gives us an idea that in Sierra Leone, 
you're having a, a species that could transmit at high levels. Even though you may not find the disease uh, 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 sort of similar to what you find in the savanna areas where you have more blinding. In the savanna areas, in terms of the disease itself or transmission, you do find out that the species that you have are transmitting a lot. And so when you have such a situation and you start having situations of uh, insecurity, as was mentioned by Moses, when you have issues like e Ebola and so on, you stop treatment. And once you stop that treatment and you have this particular species, it shows you that you can easily rebound. And so this is something that we have to take into consideration when looking at the situation in Sierra Leone. And we should also, it also uh, brings us the, uh, to uh, attention that stopping prematurely in any place could be detrimental to the whole program. And this is something that we have to take into account looking at onchocerciasis transmission cross ball. Now, what could be done? Uh, you did mention multidectin. Some of the things that can also be done in the hotspot areas is to also look at the, uh, what we we're calling uh, as part of the alternate treatment strategies, limited vector control, whether it's uh, slash and clear in some of the hotspot areas or some limited ground lab siding in those areas. I think when this is combined with your uh, new treatment strategy, I'm sure that uh, as to uh, the optimism that was shared by Yaobi and, and also uh, uh, Moses, I'm sure that Sierra Leone will still be able to uh, make it. But I think we need to be conscious of the fact that we're dealing with a different better uh, uh, transmission system, Sierra Leone. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Daniel. That was really super helpful. And let's hear from more partners that uh, have been supporting Sierra Leone uh, in the past uh, many years. So I want to hear us from uh, Nancy Smart, Country Director for Sierra Leone in SciSavers. So can my colleagues from WHO please uh, project her contribution? We have a small video. Small video. Okay, uh, I will do. Thank uh, you. Um, Maria? It was other person supposed who to be the, the turn of uh, Dr. Ibrahim Labou. No, not this one. Uh, we want to hear now from Nancy Smart. Yes, but it, or it Ibrahim is, first. Yes, it it was planned. Yeah, from, uh, go ahead then. Ibrahim Let's, Labou. Thank you so much. And then my misunderstanding. I couldn't see that in the agenda. Let's then project please from Ibrahim. Apologies, Dr. Ibrahim. I didn't miss, mean to miss you. Can we put the presentation from Dr. Ibrahim? No, not this one, sorry. The further. Thanks for bearing with us, everyone. Sometimes the technical challenges. Who is going to present now? We need. To, we have a video. According uh, to um, France, I, uh, Ibrahim, you are right. I sent you a chat many times. Ibrahim, Nabu, it is correct. You can play. It. Uh, we cannot hear anything. Uh, 
Can you hear me, Mr. Doctor, or Mr. Sorry for my uh, Ibrahim? When you share it, uh, try to to make sure that the two uh, uh, there are two the sound have to be uh, chosen. Okay, when you share it. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, all. I'm Dr. Ibrahim Kagulibo, Program Manager, National Neglected Tropical Diseases, Sierra Leone. I'm presenting the communique for the 12th meeting of the National Tropical Diseases Technical Advising Committee. And in New Bluefields Hotel Freetown on the 15th December 2022. Introduction. The Technical Advisory Committee TAC of the National Neglected Tropical Disease Program, NNTDP, held a hybrid meeting on the 15th December 2022. The theme of the meeting was, we are away towards the elimination of oncosarchiasis in Sierra Leone. The objective of the meeting was to review progress with program implementation and address programmatic and funding gaps and challenges for achieving the elimination targets for oncosarchiasis, lymphatic filariasis, and other entities amenable to preventive chemotherapy. Relevant government institutions in Sierra Leone and strategic partners supporting the NNTDP participated in the meeting, including London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, Injala University, Central Public Health Reference Laboratory, Site Savers, and Ellen Keller International. We discussed the following. One, technical reports from the program and technical consultants. Two, community engagement and the importance of the involvement of community health workers in community-based distributions of medicine. Three, integration of the archival NTD results into the updated district health information system platform. For verification of NTD survey results processed in other countries. Five, cross sector collaboration with the Ministry of Health and Sanitation. And six, cross border issues with the Manor River Union, within the Manor River Union. We want to appreciate the continued support of the leadership of MOHS for ensuring that the program is making progress towards elimination. We recognize that point of care diagnostic in criti is critical to the impact assessment activities and applaud efforts of the Central for the Health Reference Laboratory with partners to validate the pre-stop MDA results generated in the National Public Health Laboratory of Cameroon. We recognize the coordinated efforts of partners in ensuring, enhancing community engagement in hard to reach areas, especially in the districts along the Guinea and Liberia borders and supporting the 2019 Oncosarchiasis Impact Assessment. 
We applaud the efforts by site savers for strengthening the capacity for financial management, monitoring, and evaluation in the ministry to support the program. We appreciate the contributions from local and international experts during the discussion sessions that follow the well-received presentations from the program, technical experts, Central Public Health Reference Laboratory, Ministry of Health and Sanitation Directorates of Environmental Health and Sanitation and Primary Health Care. Main action points and recommendation. One, facilitate training at the peripheral health units level to ensure data captured is of high quality and variable at the district level. Accommodate the participation of community health workers in community drug distribution activities through review of the 2021 National Community Health Worker Policy. Accelerates the incorporation of the archived MS Excel spreadsheets of NTD survey results into the updated district health information system platform. This will require technical assistance. Four, facilitate the shipment of samples from Cameroon to validate the UNCO impact assessment results. Five, support the rapid processing of UNCO elimination mapping samples from the Western Area Rural Districts and Bond Districts Coastal Plains. Five, six, talk to identify implementation of reach chat questions and explore collaborations with technical experts on joint proposals for research funding and publications. Seven, engage the newly trained entomological techni technicians in vector control activities. It continues to use the well-designed small area surveys to inform targeted treatments to achieve high impact. Then continue to engage local government communities to ensure good collaboration with the district health management team. Then use the world NTD day to address program gaps and advocate for more support from development partners. 11, engage the MOH health leadership to promote cross-sector collaborations within the ministry. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ibrahim, National Coordinator of the Ministry of Health, for really acknowledging the contributions of the government and the contribution of all the partners, and also for giving us a very clear list of actions to be able to accelerate the impact. We are going to hear now a bit more from Luis Hamill from SciSavers to give us some uh, further details on the OB16 serology. So we have a pre-recorded message from her, and I'm asking my WHO colleagues to please play it for us. And please, I invite all the audience to keep uh, writing your questions, your comments in the chat. I will read them uh, during the question and answer uh, session at the very end, and we will have the floor, give the floor to the different um, panelists, the Ministry of Health and colleagues, to respond to some of these questions. But now let's hear from Luis. As you all know, Luis is the director for lymphatic filariasis and oncotherapiasis.
Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you, wherever you're joining us from. Um, thank you for this invite to speak at this seminar on oxocasis in Sierra Leone. My name is Louise Hamill. I am the director of the LF and oxocasis technical unit at Site Savers. So with regards to OB16, many countries, not just Sierra Leone, have faced challenges with their OB16 monitoring. These challenges in Sierra Leone in particular, but not alone, have included long production lead times, global supply chain shortages at key survey times, um, the COVID-19 pandemic delaying plans for training on OB16 techniques, and the high costs and technical complexity of securing OB16 diagnostics and the related consumables and supplies. Despite this, Sierra Leone has managed to collect a wealth of OB16 serological data, putting them in an excellent position to measure their progress towards WHO thresholds. As we mostly know, the WHO thresholds for epidemiological surveys are all based around measurement of the OV16 antibodies. That's why it's so important for Sierra Leone and other countries to know the prevalence of OV16 as their NDA and treatment programs are going on. So Sierra Leone have done really well in this, as I said, and they've done this by integrating OV16 testing into LF surveys which is you know, a really good mechanism to just have a look and see what's there, what's going on, get that rough picture. And they've also conducted targeted OB16 serological surveys at their Sentinel Black Fly breeding sites. One of the things, in my opinion, that has allowed Sierra Leone to collect OB16 serological data has been their excellent entomological programmatic data that they've also collected over the years. Sierra Leone have good recent data detailing the location of their black fly breeding sites and the seasonality of black fly biting rates. This data lets them know what are the best sites to target for OB16 serological surveys, and it also allows comparison of that entomological and epidemiological data. Sierra Leone, in addition to all these efforts, they now have their National Public Reference Laboratory at LACA, just outside of free time, trained on the OB16 laboratory RDT method. According to the data emerging globally, um, and in my opinion, this is likely to be the best option of the OB16 test commercially available at the moment. So it's really great that Sierra Leone have been able to gather so much OB16 data that they are now have a trained national laboratory that can run these tests. And I think going forward, they're in a really good position to be able to keep monitoring using the existing tests and also keep an eye out for any new diagnostic tests that might be coming up on the horizon. Um, it's been a great privilege working at Sight Savers to support the Sierra Leone team. Um, so I wish them all the best in their efforts to monitor OB16 in the future. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Luis. We really always learn so much from you. But you work at global level no? as director of Elephant Onco in Sight Savers. I really want to hear from people that are also closer to the field, like your country director in Sierra Leone, uh, Mrs. Nancy Smart. Uh, could you share with us some thoughts on the contribution from partners in Sierra Leone and what do you see as the as the key reasons for success in Sierra Leone and, and challenges? I think we have a pre-recorded uh, message from you. So colleagues, please, if you can upload her message. Yes. Sometimes when we are in the field, we really have a much better perspective of what's going on and what has been the key elements to bring us to success. I hope they are finding the video. It's hiding somewhere. And we can hear from Nancy. And then we will follow with Mrs. Sunga Junega, the country director also from Helen Keller International. So I really want to, to hear from, from the country perspective. Thanks. 
Uh, my name is Nancy Smart. I'm the country director for Site Savers Program in Sierra Leone, and I'm presenting on our contribution towards Obosaki Assist Elimination, as well as the drivers that have led to the progress and current situation. Uh, Site Savers, we've worked in Sierra Leone for over 60 years, and our focus has been on treating high conditions, particularly cataract, and also preventing the spread of neglected tropical diseases. We've collaborated in the past with APOC and Ministry of Health to establish the OKU Sarkiasis Control Program in 1989, and thereafter initiated the OKU Sarkiasis Control, including the identification of sentinel sites and entomological work involving area spring targeting the black flies. And uh, we work together with APOC to train community drug distributors, which emanated from the CDTI program, which is the Community Directed Treatment Intervention. So our contribution have ranged from uh, research or capacity building, and the, at the initial stage, we prepared and finalized the Opusakiasis Regulation Plan, and also created the functioning Opusakiasis Technical Advisory Committee, as uh, stipulated by the WHO, and have supported it uh, to have a biannual meeting uh, in the country. We've also supported the cross-border meetings with the MIU countries, that's Manor River countries of Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone over the years, um, um, in Sierra Leone and other countries. And in, re in the research work, uh, we did the delineation of sentinel sites across the country, 43 of them, and also the quarterly breeding site assessments, which led to providing information for the OCO impact assessment that was done in 2019. And uh, recently in 2022, we did the OCO 2023, we did the OCO elimination mapping in Bonds and Western Area Rural Districts. The report has been, the data has been analyzed and the report will be provided when it's completed. For capacity building, we've trained over 80 community drug distributors as fly catchers in the country, 32 district entomological technicians to support entomological work in all the districts, particularly in the 43 sentinel sites. We've trained eight laboratory scientists on skills of analyzing dry bot samples using OV16 RDT as well as ELISA in the lab. We've also trained 32 uh, Ministry of Health and Sanitation workers, including 16 MRE officers and 16 NTD focal persons on the electronic data entry interface into the HMIS. We've as well trained 70 health facility staff on the electronic data entry interfaces and the new data collection forms and supported the integration of NTD data elements into HMIS as part of DHO requirements. In training of these people, we've trained uh, training of trainers and we've also trained other health staff in the Western Area Rural District and West, uh, also Western Area in Sale in Freetown. And all of these have been our contributions, and these have been some of the things we've done. In addition to the contribution, we have done uh, some of the drivers that we think led to the progress and current situation. And this includes studies that were done in the 80s in Sale, which proved that Sierra has the highest biting rates. In 1980, 1988 and 2004, the baseline study also reported the highest prevalence as presented by Prof. And all of these other research, for example, in 2005 when MDA was started, there has been yearly therapeutic coverage of MDAs, which was also used. And 2008, an impact survey was also done, which has been submitted, uh, presented by Prof including the 2010 data also provided. In 2017, another data was also published on the effectiveness of MDA and thus on the cause of reaching elimination by 2025, which was done by HAI. And thereafter, a lot of discussions went on and using all of the data as drivers, we also did the 2019 impact as assessment survey that serological survey, and the report was published in 2021 with 20.8 equivalence rates of oncosarcosis in the country. 
So I thank you very much. This is our presentation. Now, uh, request for additional questions or clarifications. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Nancy from SciSavers. Really impressive how you guys have been supporting so much the Ministry of Health in Sierra Leone. And impressive to see that they never miss it, a round of NDA. Wow. Even during COVID times, only the year 20, 2014 because of Ebola, obviously. But it is really impressive to have all these rounds of treatment not missing one. Uh, and I want to hear also from Helen Keller International because they are also working very, very closely with the government in the field. Can we hear please from Mrs. Yuneya? Uh, we also have a small pre-recorded presentation. They wanted to make sure connectivity issues don't uh, get in the middle to be able to pass this key message that they want to, to transmit. So please, uh, let's play her presentation. Thank you, Suneya. Hello, everyone. I want to start by thanking the organizers for this event and for giving Sierra Leone the opportunity to be able to showcase the gains we have made in um, the Oncos Archives elimination space. Um, in terms of the support that Helen Keller has been providing uh, to the country, I think it goes back to about 2004, 2005, when we supported the Ministry of Health and Sanitation, along with other partners, many of whom are in the room already, uh, to reorganize what was at that time only the Oncosarchiasis Elimination Program into a wider neglected tropical diseases program at the national level. Uh, since then, with support from USAID, Helen Keller International has been supporting mass drug administration in the country since 2007. Um, initially started with just being a community-centered ivermectin uh, NDA. Uh, later that year, albendazole was added to the mix to make it into a more integrated MDA with a view to be able to, um, you know, treat for exposure to both onco as well as lymphatic pleuritis. Um, we, in terms of the support to MDAs, one is the actual implementation of the MDA, but then also ensuring that the community drug distributors, roughly about 30,000 in country, also have the logistic support, the admin support, to be able to distribute these drugs to the people who actually need these drugs, to the exposed population. So the entire kind of, I would say, uh, chain of um, doing the MDA all the way from distribution uh, down to technical capacity building, you know, human resources are an important, extremely critical component of any activity um, in the health sector. So making sure that the correct training is provided, they have all the tools that they need to be able to do the MDA, to be able to collect data as a result of these MDAs. Um, and we do that capacity building at all three levels, starting from the national level with the neglected, National Neglected Tropical Diseases Program at the Ministry, going to the district level where we work with the district health management teams, ensuring all the people involved are aware of what needs to happen, and then going down to the community level uh, where we work with both the community health workers, the community drug distributors, and the community itself to be able to make sure that the um, MDs indeed happen. Uh, the way they need to happen. Um, at the same time, we are also providing technical support along with other partners to develop things like the NTD strategic master plan, the NTD sustainability plan, a lot of um, which kind of then governs uh, what happens in the NTD space uh, going forward in the country. In terms of the data and where we are at present with the situation, I think it's important to first acknowledge that there is a lot of data that's available on, on not just Onco, but other entities as well in country. I think it's important to go back all the way to kind of 2002, 2004, when the first baseline assessment for Onco was done, which basically said that in all the 14 endemic, 14 districts of Sierra Leone at the time, this was endemic and the prevalence was over 50%, which was of course very high. Um, like I mentioned, the first um, MDA looked, which was just ivermectin centric, looked at over 8,000 villages, which were both meso and hyper endemic at the time. Um, later, like I mentioned, albendazole was added and um, an impact assessment was done in 2010. This impact assessment for the MDA was supported by the African program for oncosarcosis control. And the impact assessment basically showed that the prevalence in the districts that received the MDA, all 14 at the time, had gone down from roughly about 67% average to about 20% average, which as you can see is a massive uh, reduction in prevalence. Um, as in the MDAs continued over the years, after about 10 years of MDAs in 2017, another impact assessment was done. And while there were many findings of that assessment as well, I think the most critical one was 
um, the fact that um, it reiterated the need to continue the MDA with ivermectin. Uh, the next, which is the more recent assessment, has been done by Sight Savers, and um, it shows that in six districts, we no longer have 14 districts in the country, we now have 16. So in six districts, the numbers, are, the prevalence is over 20%, roughly between 20 to 30%, while the rest of the country it is below 20%. Um, which I think is great in terms of the in terms of the gains that Sierra Leone has made. I think it's tremendous progress. Not to say that we still need to look at these six districts and look at uh, why the prevalence remains high and what we need to do in these districts. I think going forward, it's important that, like I said, we look at these six districts, but then we also kind of base a lot of what needs to happen into the sustainability plan. I think that's going to be the most important critical document that's going to take us to ensure we don't lose the gains we have made in onco space in, in the country and at the same time that we are able to maintain some of the activities that are critical to ensure that the threshold of prevalence remains low. Um, I think it's important that we continue to work, like I mentioned, with the Ministry of Health, with other partners in the room. Um, to ensure that it, the prevalence is low and I want to make sure that we take this opportunity to congratulate and celebrate I think the tremendous progress that Sierra Leone has made in order to get the prevalence down to these numbers uh, but still a lot remains to be done and I really look forward to continuing to support the government of Sierra Leone to ensure that we are able to eliminate um, UNCO uh, from Sierra Leone hopefully soon. Thank you. Thank you Mrs. Uh, Yuneha, uh, as you said, you have been putting a lot of effort on building capacity from the community level, the regional level, and the national level, and that has resulted in high quality data. Uh, that is fundamental, and I really encourage Sierra Leone to keep those, all those data sets and share them with SPEN and WHO, because I want to inform to you all that we are going to launch a new GON website where we intend to share data that will be fundamental uh, to reach the last mile and to really reach the final elimination. Not only keeping prevalences low, as, as you were saying, but also really reaching the final, final elimination until oncotherciasis is gone. And for that, we need a very close country coordination with your neighboring countries to be able to ensure that we target cross-border issues, that we are well coordinated. And for that, we are going to hear from Guinea and from Liberia. So we have two excellent messages from uh, Dr. Diallo uh, from Guinea and from Dr. Sony from Liberia. So let's hear from them. Bonjour. Tous et à toutes, je suis le docteur Diallo Nouhou Concouré, le coordonnateur du programme national de lutte contre les maladies tropicales négligées à chimiothérapie préventive MTNCTP de Guinée. Je voudrais donc partager avec vous l'expérience de la Guinée dans la lutte contre l'oncocercose, notamment les défis de traitement transfrontalier entre la Guinée et la Sierra Leone. Pour rappel, je voudrais dire que la Guinée fait frontière avec euh, plusieurs pays. Il y en a six, mais ici on parlera de ce qui se passe entre la Guinée et la Sierra Leone. Lors du début de la lutte contre l'oncocercose, la Guinée et la Sierra Leone sont les pays qui font partie de ce qu'on a appelé l'extension ouest du programme spécial de l'OMS appelé OCP. Au Conseil Cagis Control Programme. Cette lutte a démarré en 1986 et s'est poursuivie jusqu'en 2002, date à laquelle il y a eu arrêt de traitement larvicide dans toute la zone. Et... Donc, les différentes prospections qui ont été menées à la Guinée ont Diversas atividades que foram levadas a cabo à l'oncocercose. On est cinq sont frontaliers avec la Sierra Leone. Ce qui a permis donc de mesurer la nécessité d'avoir une synchronisation des actions à mener entre les deux pays. Mais il faut rappeler que à la clôture de l'OCP en 2002, un certain nombre de zones, donc de districts sanitaires, présentaient des résultats peu satisfaisants sur le plan entomologique et sur le plan épidémiologique. Tout d'abord, 
six districts sanitaires en jaune sur la carte à droite que vous voyez. Mais l'équipe nationale de Guinée a procédé à des enquêtes épidémiologiques le long de la frontière avec la Sierra Leone et a trouvé des prévalences assez élevées qui nécessitaient donc qu'il y ait une extension de ce qu'on a appelé les zones d'intervention spéciales. En 2003, donc de 2003 à 2007, ces zones d'intervention spéciales ont été confiées au nouveau programme de l'OMS appelé OMS APOC. L'équipe de Guinée donc a travaillé avec l'OMS APOC dans ces zones d'intervention spéciales en continuant la lutte par la distribution de l'ivermectine. Sachant qu'il y a un mouvement important de population entre les deux pays, le long de la frontière, il y a eu l'organisation de six réunions, même plus de six réunions entre ces deux pays, tantôt en Sierra Leone, tantôt en Guinée, ou même dans les pays de la Mano Rivière Réunion, ou bien au Libéria. Et des recommandations avaient été formulées au, lourd, au cours de ces différentes rencontres, et souvent ce sont les mêmes recommandations qui revenaient, à savoir assurer la synchronisation des enquêtes et des traitements le long des frontières, impliquer les responsables des districts et sous-districts des zones frontalières. Mais il faut reconnaître que pour par faute de mobilisation des ressources, ces recommandations n'ont pas été mises en œuvre. C'est le défi principal auquel nous faisons face. Or, comme le montre le tableau au-dessous de la carte ici, la population du côté de la Guinée est estimé à plus d'un million de personnes qu'il faudra pouvoir gérer dans le traitement. On organise les traitements de masse, mais chaque pays avec son propre programme. Je pense que pour pouvoir résoudre le problème, il faudrait que nous parvenions donc à assurer cette synchronisation, c'est-à-dire que les deux pays traitent les districts sanitaires frontaliers en même temps et qu'ils assurent les enquêtes d'impact en même temps, puisque actuellement, c'est les enquêtes pré arrêt que nous devons organiser dans ce district euh, pour pouvoir avoir le statut actuel de la transmission de l'oncocétose dans ces deux pays. Le défi principal réside donc dans la mobilisation des ressources financières pour mener ces traitements synchronisés et ces enquêtes synchronisées. Là, un peu ce que je voulais, euh, compte tenu du temps qui nous a été imparti, partagé avec euh, les collègues du panel. Je vous remercie. Merci, chers collègues Diallo, et pour cette présentation et, et partager les expériences de la Guinée dans les zones et, et transfrontalières. Et now we are going to hear from Dr. Sonny from Liberia, that also is a neighboring country with Sierra Leone. What is the situation in the cross-border um, states? Can we hear from Sonny? Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Sonny Zema Bell. I'm the Uncle Sagasses coordinator in Liberia. I'm happy to be part of this network and also to serve as a panelist as we discuss ways forward as Sierra Leone work towards the elimination of oncosarcasis. This is the status of oncosarcasis in Liberia. We have 15 counties. They are all endemic of oncosarcasis in Liberia. This map shows our bordering countries. We are bordered on the west by Sierra Leone on the north by Guinea, and on the east by Côte d'Ivoire. So from Sierra Leone, we have two counties that are close to the borders. We have Cape Mount, Grand Cape Mount County, and we have Lofa County. We also have three counties that are bordering Guinea, and also three counties that are bordering Côte d'Ivoire. Our situation is not different from other countries. We have established the Minor River Union meetings that have been held even though not regularly. 
We have also shared our experience during one of the TAG meetings in Sierra Leone. There is no direct implementation of cross-border activities from Liberia. We had one meeting in four of our districts in Grand Jida County, that is bordering Cote d'Ivoire, and that was in 2017. Activities planned are limited to partners funding package, and I think that this is a major issue if we are to succeed in uh, the cross-border collaboration, we will have to look at the furthering. We need to have regular coordination meetings at the borders. Countries also need to develop plans for bordering communities. We already know our communities. We also need to synchronize activities, especially when we know we have the same partners. For example, we have such savers that is in Liberia, and we also have such savers in Sierra Leone. We also need to capacitate our district office to be at the forefront to implement cross-border activities. And in all that we are doing or that we will do, we need our partner support to actually make this a reality. If we don't have the partner support, we may be talking collaboration, cross-border meetings, and it will come to reality. So to succeed in this strategy, we need our partner's support. Thank you, thank you to all of our partners who continue to support us, especially SACSIVAS, the only funding partner right now in Liberia. We say thank you so much, and we hope that you continue to lobby, continue to work together. Thank you, Gon. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Sonny. Thank you so much. We have now a couple of minutes to any questions and answers from the audience that you may want to ask or even comments, anything you wish to say. I have been looking at the chat and I think the majority of the comments that have been made there have actually been already addressed. So I don't know if anyone from the audience would like to say something or comment on anything. We can give you the floor. So you just need to type in the chat that you want to speak and then we will unmute you so that you can actually take the floor and speak because we want to really make sure that you have the opportunity to say whatever you want. This is your webinar and this is really for you. So anything you wish to say, just let us know and we give you the floor. Uh, and uh, I see three hands raising, but I think those hands have been there since the beginning. So I actually don't think those hands are representative of people that want to speak. But if you want to prove me wrong, put something in the chat and I will give you the floor. I see the hand from La Sara, from Cristobal, from Abdul. I think probably they were... Aha, uh -huh. I can see the hand of Tony Yuketi. Thank you, Tony. Can we please unmute uh, Tony so he can have access to his microphone and video and he can let us uh, hear from him? Because I think he wants to say something... Yes, now you yes, have to feel uh, Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Maria. And I, would, I would like really to congratulate all the presenters for this nice presentation about what is going on in uh, Sierra Leone and the bordering countries. Uh, my question is just related to the cross-border activities as we have heard both from uh, uh, Guinea and also from Liberia. There is an issue regarding funding. I'm just wondering how countries are doing in order to raise funds domestically, because, you know, we can uh, still continue depending on uh, external funding. We know the issues when we have problems like COVID and so on. I mean, uh, the, the, the funding is going to lack. And uh, how what are the efforts internally within the countries we are doing in order to increase funding for addressing cross-border issues? Otherwise, 
elimination is going to be a problem. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Tony. Do you have a preference of who would you like uh, to start uh, replying to you? Like from the country perspective, from the partner perspective, from the government, maybe Dr. Ibrahim? I will start with Liberia and Liberia. also to start with uh, Sierra Leone. Excellent. So we give the floor then to Sony if you are around. Uh, Sony, you can take the floor and try to address that question. And then we will follow with Dr. Ibrahim from Sierra Leone. And if Sony is not around, I cannot see her because I know she. Ah, yeah, she's around. Sony, can you? Well, while she gets ready, we can also give the floor to Dr. Ibrahim. You want to give your perspective from Sierra Leone? So I don't see. We we have to unmute Sony as well because I don't know if she gave she had the the room as panelist. Dr. Ibrahim, you can unmute yourself. Otherwise, uh, we keep this question in mind, Tony, and we will make sure we follow up with them and try to reply to you by email because it's a very critical question. Yeah, I can hear somebody now. Please go ahead. No? Uh, Sony is actually saying that she is not Unmuted. So can we please unmute Sonny? She's in the Hello? Release. Yes, please go ahead. Hello? We can hear you. Are you getting me? We are getting you. Thank you. Um cross-border issue is really a problem in Sierra Leone because we have a single transmission zone that enters right inside Guinea and carries the, 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 the inf infection right inside Guinea. And then we have this um, 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 districts in the, in the, in the, the cross-border districts. They also they are also doing business with Guinea and Sierra Leone. So they are coming in and out, coming in and out. When they are infected in Guinea, they come to Sierra Leone for business and vice versa. But I think there is no way we will be able to eliminate uh, onchocerciasis in Sierra Leone without the collaboration of Guinea and Liberia. Thank you, Ibrahim. Those flies that don't respect uh, passports and boundaries. So no let's hear way. them. <laughs> yes, let's hear from Sonny then. Uh, what do you think uh, from the perspective of Liberia about resource mobilization to target diseases? Hi, everyone. So from, from Liberia contest, we have notified that cross-border coordination is very important. But as a country, we know where we stand. I think uh, my colleague there was talking about domestic funding, what countries are doing from our end in life. Bureau is it's a bit difficult. It's, it's sad to say, but it's a bit difficult. We had a receipt funding from government. All of our funding have been supported by partners. So collaborating with our neighboring countries, we could start the engagement, but we are also depending on partner support, even though we know it's not sustainable, but this is where we find ourselves. If we have to work towards the elimination of uncle sarcasm, we, we need to come together and support if we have the means to support. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sonny. Et on veut aussi entendre Dr. Diallo? Pour la Guinée, pour nous partager son opinion sur la mobilisation des ressources. Docteur Diallo, s'il vous plaît.
Est-ce que vous m'entendez? Oui, on t'entend bien. Très bien. Oui, merci. Bonjour à tous. Bonjour à Tony. Pour... Merci pour cette question. Euh, je pense que c'est une question qui revient depuis le temps d'OCP. Comment on s'apprêtait à clôturer OCP dans les années 2000? Et que avec Org, ça s'est poursuivi jusqu'à maintenant. Ne nous leurrons pas. Euh, les, nos pays sont ce qu'ils sont et l'épidémie d'Ebola est venue montrer la force ou la faiblesse du système de santé. Ça, Ainsi que la pandémie euh, de COVID-19. En général, la priorité est souvent donnée aux maladies qui entraînent des dégâts plus importants, c'est-à-dire des décès. Mais les efforts de plaidoyer continuent pour pouvoir mobiliser. Tout n'est pas que de l'argent. Nous sommes d'accord. C'est pour ça qu'il faut travailler avec les communautés à la base, pour qu'elles s'occupent d'elles-mêmes. Le problème qui se pose, c'est qu'on a remplacé la stratégie qui avait été mise en place au temps de l'OCP, qu'on appelait TIDC, par des campagnes, en mettant en avant le paiement de l'acte c'est-à-dire payer les gens pour qu'ils puissent s'impliquer et faire le travail parce qu'on est pressé d'avoir des résultats. Donc, on a quitté la directive communautaire. On est passé à, à monétoriser les actes, à payer les actes, ce qui pose problème. Il faut revenir à ça, amener les communautés à se prendre en charge. Le coordonnateur de la Sarano l'a dit. Nous avons des familles qui sont entre Sierra Leone et Guinée. Ils partagent les mariages, ils partagent des décès, ils partagent le travail, tout. Donc, si on ne traite que d'un côté, on ne traite pas de l'autre côté, c'est un problème. Donc, il faut d'abord une micro-planification au niveau des sous-districts, dans les districts frontaliers et en même temps. Voilà, ce que je pense, ce qu'il faudrait faire du point de vue mobilisation locale des ressources. Il ne s'agit pas de Merci. voir seulement Arthur. Merci, Dr. Diallo. And that's actually an excellent, excellent point to finish this webinar. Yeah, on pas. That is, uh, it is critical to be able to mobilize not only resources in terms of money, but actually human resources to mobilize the communities and make sure that they take ownership, particularly in cross-border issues, yeah, but that they actually are the ones leading the fight and involved in every step of the fight against oncotherciasis. So with that, we are going to conclude our webinar. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I think it was fascinating. And I'm going to give the floor, the last word to the Ministry of Health, Dr. Ibrahim, to say, to say tell some words to wrap up and to, to just uh, conclude this webinar. Thank you so much, everyone. Dr. Ibrahim, you have the floor and the final word. Hello? Yes, please. We can hear you. Yes. Um, I've, worked, I've worked in the ministry for more than 15 years. I'm just coming into public health, unfortunately so late, but I've started enjoying it. I thank you very, very much for what WHO and other organizations and then Keller site savers are doing to eliminate NTDs, not only in Sierra Leone, but in the Mano River Union Basin. Because as we are saying, we are interrelated. There is no way. These flies don't have bandage. Black flies don't have bandage. They come in and go out. So if you don't stop it in the basin, let's just forget about it. There's no way we can eradicate it, except we do something about a, a, a cross-border issue. And it's an issue, especially in terms of funding. We have a big gap, but we are doing our best. Side Savers and Ellen Keller are doing their best to support us. Um, I really appreciate you people from the bottom of my heart. I thank you very much. I think this is my second webinar. Believe it or leave it, <laughs> but it's true. This is the second time. Now I've started enjoying it. I thought it was boring, but this one is not boring at all. Having people like you at the helm of situations with that kind of vast experience. I think I met you once in Ethiopia and straight off from the, the distance, I like you straight because you are so vibrant in the meeting. <laughs> 
<laughs> I thank you very, very much. I hope it won't stop here. We'll be doing it until we eliminate uh, 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 onchocerciasis in the Mano River Basin, inshallah. Inshallah, until we eliminate onchocerciasis and we see it gone. Thank you so much, everyone. Until yeah. next time. Okay. Thank you, Maria. Bye bye. Thank you, Maria, and everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.